In this video, I will demonstrate the key parts of running a bus job for spin polarized and spin non polarized periodic materials. Then, the outputs are going to be used to run ChargeMall. The input files used in ChargeMall and obtained from BASP are the CHG car, PodCar, and ACAR2. In addition, you need a job underscore control dot text file and a batch file. There are four input files for BASP, the INCAR, POSCAR, POCAR, and KPOINTS. Let's start with the POSCAR file. This file contains the geometry of your system. The second line has a multiplier, which is used to scale all lattice vectors. The matrix in the following line contains the Cartesian coordinates of each of the lattice vectors in angstroms. The first row is the lattice vector A, the second row is lattice vector V, and the last is lattice vector C. Line 6 has the atom type, while line 7 has the number of each atom type. In this example, there are five atom types. The first corresponds to sodium atoms, of which there are four. The second atom type corresponds to aluminum atoms, of which there are four. The third atom type corresponds to silicon atoms, of which there are six. The fourth atom type corresponds to oxygen atoms, of which there are 24. The fifth atom type corresponds to hydrogen, of which there are eight. The coordinates can be specified either as direct or Cartesian coordinates. In this example, the direct coordinates are listed. For this example, the first four rows represent the first four atoms, so you should have as many coordinate rows as atoms in the system. Make sure this is the final geometry you want to analyze, because charge mold needs for it to be a single fixed geometry. Then, we have the PodCar file. This file appends the individual atom types, and it is a concatenation of the PodCar for the individual atom types. These atom types must be in the same order as listed in the postcard. This file stores projected augmented wave pop potentials. You can find the recommended podcasts on the BASP website. In my case, I have a folder in my cluster with all the recommended pop potentials. To assemble the podcar required for a BASP calculation, I would proceed to concatenate the atom types to a podcar file in the same order they were presented in the postcar. Refresh the cluster and now you see it appear on your present working directory. When opening, notice first appears the sodium potential and last I have the hydrogen potential. Now, we move on to the k-points file. If you want a single k-point along each direction, then use the keyword gamma and put 111. Use one horse pack keyword for anything other than 111. How to decide on the number of k-points? This article from 2018 explained that volumes of the real space and reciprocal space units are inversely proportional. That is, a very large unit cell in real space has a very small unit cell in reciprocal space. Thus, the product of the number of k-points along the i-th lattice vector multiplied by the real space length of that lattice vector should be constant, equation 20. For a fine, 400 electron volts cutoff energy, k-point mesh spacing, then use equation 21. Such mesh spacing was derived by running convergence tests shown in table 12, where the mesh spacing is kept constant. The set 6 was used as reference and deviations were small for such mesh spacing. If a very fine cutoff energy of 750 is to be used, then we need twice as many k-points as the fine grid to produce the very fine spacing for a unit cell of equal volume. Equation 22. To better illustrate the concept, an example is demonstrated. Here in Excel, I have a matrix with the lattice vectors for a specific geometry. First, I have to multiply the matrix of the lattice vectors by the multiplier in the second line. Now, the length of each of the lattice vectors is calculated. If using a fine mesh spacing, divide 16 by the lattice vector length and round up to the nearest integer to get the minimum number of k-points needed for that lattice vector. Repeat this process for each of the three lattice vectors. Those would be your k-points used in the input file. If a very fine spacing was used, 
simply double each number of K points. The line after the K points shows where to start in this case and almost always you want to start at the origin, 0, 0, 0. Now I'm going to demonstrate the spin non-polarized natural light example. Here I have ready an inker file for this job. Pay important attention to the following keywords as they impact the input files for charge mode calculation. The rest will depend on the type of calculation you want to run. Prick equals accurate sets the real space grid. This keyword includes enough real space grid points to sample plane waves accurately. Using this setting avoids aliasing aka wraparound errors. Encode equals 400 for normal setting in electron volts. This is the energy of the plane wave cutoff. Or Encode 750, high accuracy setting in electron volts. Add grid equals false. If set to true, this keyword adds an additional support grid for the augmentation charges compared to the standard fine grid. However, these extra support points introduce aliasing, aka wraparound errors, that make the electron density oscillate. In this figure, we can see a plot of the core density. Instead of having rounded spheres, spike like atoms are observed due to density oscillations when using add grid equals true and will not occur with add grid equals false. The charge mode results for the calculation setting this keyword to true do not give good sound results, therefore this keyword must always be set to false. NSW equals zero, no geometry changes. You can perform charge mode analysis on any kind of geometry you want, a DFT optimized geometry, an experimental geometry, a transition state geometry, or a non-equilibrium geometry. If you want to use an optimized geometry, you must do the geometry optimization in a separate prior BASP calculation before the BASP calculation to generate the electron density files. After you have the desired geometry, then run a BASP fixed geometry calculation with NSW equals zero to generate the electron density files for charge mode input. L charge equals true generates CHG car, which is one of the input files needed for charge mode. LAE CHG equals true generates a car 2, another input file needed. You will also need the put car in addition to the CHG car and a car 2 file. I smear equals 0 for Gaussian smearing. I smear equals minus 1 for Fermi smearing. Sigma equals 0 0.05 or 0 0.1 is the smearing width in electron volts. I spin equals 1 for spin non polarized or I spin equals 2 for spin polarized. In this case, charge mode generates the ASM's file. Add a batch file and transfer the folder to the cluster. Run the job and refresh from time to time. Check the status of the job and when complete, open the OC car file. When running a fixed geometry, you should only have one geometry to get the total energy and it converge if the total electronic steps end were less than the specified in the in-car file for NELM. In this case, it converged in 11 and 200 was the maximum. Create a separate subfolder for the charge mode job. Remember to transfer your BASP results to your local computer. Transfer to this folder the ACAR2, CHG car, and POT car obtained from BASP. Add a batch file and set it up accordingly. Also, add a job control text file. In the job underscore control that text file, make sure you specify the correct path to the atomic densities directory. If you are unsure how to set up this atomic densities directory, please watch our other video tutorial on overview for running charge mode program that explains how to set up this atomic densities directory. Run the charge mold job. Check for job completion. We see the run was complete and see no errors in the data output file. For the lithium manganese oxide spin polarized example, first a geometry optimization and then a density generation is performed. Since we want to optimize the geometry first, this folder is called geom underscore op. In this incur file, NSW is set to 300, which are the maximum number of geometry optimization steps the job is going to be allowed to take. ISF equals 3 controls whether to optimize ion position, unit cell shape, or unit cell size. You can find this table in the BASP wiki showing the different options you can choose from.
ibrion equals 2 is for ionic relaxation using the conjugate rating algorithm. If desired, you could use instead any of the other ibrion methods. Edif g equals negative 0.05 is the convergence criterion used for geometry optimization. Notice also that now i spin equals 2 is letting BASP know that this is a spin polarized calculation. For this reason, now the magnetic moment for each atom can be set to an initial guess using the magmon tag. Also, some parallelization options were added. Now, I inspect the postcard and k-points files. Again, the postcard is just a concatenation of the atom's potentials. At the batch file. Transfer the inputs to the cluster and run the job. and check for the status of the job. When complete, open the OCCAR file and now we see the job iterated through 16 different geometries and went through 10 out of the 200 SCF cycles on the last geometry. For this type of calculation, you can also check the OutCAR file and see reach required accuracy towards the bottom of the file. Now that we know our run converged, transfer the files to your local computer. Create a new folder for the generation of the density. Copy the concar, incar, kpoints, and podcar files from the past run to the new folder. Change the name of the concar file to postcar and this is now the optimized and fixed geometry we want to generate the density of. Add the batch file. Now, we need to modify the incar file. We need to delete the geometry optimization settings and set NSW to zero, as this is now a fixed geometry calculation. Save it and transfer the gen underscore dense folder to the cluster. Run the job. Check for completion and open the OCCAR file. We see it converged before the 200 SCF cycles we specified in the INCAR file and only used a fixed geometry. Transfer the files to your local computer and create a new subfolder for the chargeable job. Transfer the input files for chargemall from the gen underscore dense folder and add the batch and job control text files. Run the job. Check for completion and inspect the that output file to check for errors. Note that, since this was a spin polarized example, charge mode generated an output containing the atomic spin moments of the material, which was not generated in the spin non-polarized natural light example. If you want more information about the submission of charge mode with BASP, visit our videos linked in the description. In there, you will also find how to visualize the charge mode output files using JMO. We thank the NSF Career Award for making this video possible.